Okay, so this video is going to be about running a DC sweep simulation in LT Spice, and in this video I'm just going to measure diode characteristics, but there's a whole bunch of other things you can do with this, and maybe I'll post some videos about those too. Okay, so here's my LT Spice window. Let's start a new schematic, and I'm just going to put a voltage source and a diode. So I hit the D key for diode. Uh, you should not do this in real life, but these things don't blow up in LT Spice, so it's fine. Just going to connect the voltage source directly to the diode and then ground one end of those. So for the voltage source, I'm just going to put 1. We're not going to use that, but it'll have a DC value of 1. So for the diode, um, I guess you can use the default diode model. Let's do that at first. I'll show in a second how to change that, but for right now it's not really important. So let's click Simulate, Edit Simulation Command, click on DC Sweep. We can do three sweeps if we want. I'm only going to do one, obviously, because um, I only have one source. So it says here, name a first source to sweep. So that could be a voltage source or a current source. I only have a voltage source, and the only one is named V1. So I'll put V1 in there. Type of sweep, let's do linear. Let's start at zero volts, and let's go up to three volts. Usually diodes will start on fire after that, so that's as far as we'll go. Let's do increments of one millivolt linearly. So then I just click to place that on the screen. Now I will save this file before I simulate. So that's saved as DC sweep. And now let's simulate. Okay, so um, now along the x-axis here of the graph, I'll see the input voltage value. That's the voltage coming from this source. If I left click with the voltmeter on this node, I'll see that it just sweeps along with the input. So, you know, the voltage across the diode is the voltage at the input. There's nothing more complicated than that. That's not very interesting. Um, but now let's look at the current through the diode. That's the interesting part. If I double click um, on that, that'll be the only thing shown. So if I hover over the diode, this is the little current meter. Um, if I hover over a node, this is the voltage meter. So to measure current, I click right here. So it looks like the diode does not conduct any current until we get to about 1.3 or 1.4 volts, and then it just goes crazy. This is tera amps, I guess. That's pretty bonkers. Um, that's the default diode model, which is more or less an ideal diode model. Uh, that's not going to reflect a real diode. Nothing's going to conduct tera amps. So let's change that to a real diode. I'm going to right click on this, say pick new diode. Uh, 914 is a pretty common diode, so let's click that one and re-simulate. Um, okay, so now it has um, a threshold voltage, probably that's more realistic, 0.7 or 0.8 volts is when it starts conducting current. And then it's in the amps range after that. This looks somewhat similar to the Shockley equation output. Um, there's a couple different types of diodes I can select. Let's do uh, 4148. Um, again, pretty similar. There's more current being conducted through this one. Again, you would never want to do this in real life, just connect a diode directly up to a voltage source because the current just goes crazy as soon as it turns on. This is not a good way to do it, um, but this is just for illustration purposes right now. Let's go to an LED. So here in the types, um, I can see these are just silicon, I almost said silicone, silicon diodes, which are the default type. Um, let's find an LED here. So I don't know really what the difference is between any of these, so I'll just select this one run the simulation, and you can see the threshold voltage is now much higher, which is pretty typical of LEDs. Uh, this is probably a red LED. Those tend to have threshold voltages around high, like 1 volts, like 1 1.7, 1 1.8. Uh, blue LEDs, 
oops, are more like in the 2.5 volts range. Um, let's select another random one and see if it changes. Yeah, that's a lot higher. So this is probably like a blue or a green LED now. Um, let's go to a Schottky diode just for the fun of it. This is a pretty common Schottky diode. These have really low threshold voltages and a really low on resistance. So the current that they conduct is just enormous. Um, okay, so let's go to a Zener diode now. Zener diodes are fun because they have a um, reverse threshold, threshold voltage. So they have this reverse breakdown point. So let's sweep from, oops, not that. Click on the simulation command here. So let's sweep now from negative 10 to 10 volts. And we'll see both the positive threshold voltage and the reverse breakdown threshold voltage for the Zener diode. So we can see up here around point I don't know, 0 0.5 volts or something is the positive threshold voltage, and then 6.2 volts here was the reverse breakdown voltage, um, which is what Zener diodes are meant to do. They're meant to have a very precise reverse breakdown voltage. Um, if I put a resistor in series with this, that'll limit the current to a more reasonable level, which is how you prevent these things from blowing up. So now I can see I put a 1K resistor in series with the diode, and now the current is more in the milliamps range, which is definitely what you want out of these. Okay, so um, as far as just simulating a DC sweep with a diode, that's probably about as far as I can go into it. So at some point, maybe I'll make a DC sweep video with a transistor or something along those lines, but that's it for this one.